freaking Marie. Mm. We, we've been having a lot of comparing. I've got a lot of comparing. So indeed. today we're going to get the facts. Yeah, I, I collected a number of documents over time. Um, and I'm going to start, we should always remember to start with the Kalinago people because they had a great deal of knowledge about these things. Um, they had been in Dominica for over 2,000 years. And let us understand that hurricanes have been happening in this land uh, for thousands of years. It just so happens that we are here at this time and uh, we are in the way. I mean, nature is doing her thing and we are basically in the way. We are building things, we are um, constructing roads and all that. And then we are shocked and horrified when they are swept away or damaged or our roofs uh, are destroyed, our houses are flooded. Uh, but we must understand that these things have been happening uh, long before even human beings came and established themselves in Dominica. But the people who first settled, that is the indigenous Amerindian people, and most notably the Kalinago people, have left evidence of their knowledge, their awareness of, of these storms. For instance, even the name that we use, hurricane, comes from the Kalinago Uragan. Uragan was this uh, force that emerged during the period between May and October because then again the Kalinago people had a name for that period of time, Ulu Yu Urudu. And that was that period between May and October when different waves of bad weather would come across the Atlantic Ocean. So they had, uh, as I said, names in their language for those uh, phenomena which, which happened. They also had names for the things that we are observing, particularly with, with Hurricane Maria, this amazing uh, blow that we have got besides the wind, that is the water and the rivers. So the Kalinago even had a special phrase for this phenomena. That is uh, when the, um, the landslides and flooded ravines and rivers came down. The Kalinago called it, and I will, it's a long phrase, I will be very careful in my pronunciation, Takululutoni Tona. Tona is water, Tona is a river. So what they are basically describing is the damage wrought by powerful rainstorms, causing rivers to rise rapidly and overflow their banks, stripping everything away before them, tossing giant boulders in what and the French who were describing this, they called it a bouleversement des wash that reconfigures the landscape. So that basically what we are, are seeing is that what the Kalinago people were describing hundreds of years ago, we are seeing today. Um, and of course, they had their own names for these disasters. They also realized that this was a period of storms because the Kalinago year, began in what we call uh, the 21st of December. That was when the sun was the furthest south. And they knew that that was the beginning of the dry season. You had January, February, March. The sun was directly over Dominica, the Caribbean, the Lesser Antilles. And they knew that this was the dry season. This is when you prepared your gardens. You went and you cut the forest and you cleaned and you burnt and you prepared for the rainy season. The rainy season started on the 21st of June, when the sun is the furthest north. And that is when they knew that at any time, these uragans, these terrible spirits that would descend on uh, Waitukubuli would come and rip the place to shreds. And they would know that by the middle of September, they would have to have all their cassava, their yam, their sweet potato planted because they knew that when these storms came, they would rip their crops to bits. And they would know also that they had to store yam, potatoes, make enough cassava to supply food for a period of time after these storms hit. So they were well prepared. They realized that you needed enough food after a uragan for you to be able to survive for a few months. Uh, so they knew, they knew exactly what they were doing. Now, we get the rec records of hurricanes. Uh, basically, our best records are after the British took over Dominica. British took over Dominica in 1763. 
And from that time, we get detailed records of the different hurricanes and their intensity. So for instance, the first recorded hurricane after the British came was in October 1766. Then we had another one, 26 July 1769, 30th August 1772, and one of the worst on the 6th of September 1776. But there was an even worse one in 1780. Now this hurricane started uh, to hit Barbados. It curved to St. Lucia, hit Martinique, hit Dominica, Guadeloupe, Antigua, and then moved out into the Atlantic. So you had a line of islands that were hit by that. And there was massive destruction in Dominica at that time. Now, the hurricane of 1806 was very bad indeed, particularly in the Roseau area. Now, those people who were in Roseau would have uh, experienced a certain amount of flooding when the river was blocked and diverted across into Hillsborough Street, Kennedy Avenue, and also in parts of Cork Street. Uh, but this has happened before, and this is the point I want to make on this program is, we are living at this time. Uh, the people, the older people, they may have, would have experienced Hurricane David. Some of them may even have experienced the hurricanes of 1928 and 1930. I am going to deal later on with the hurricane of 1916, which was extremely bad indeed, and interestingly enough, damaged many of the same areas that Maria has destroyed. But let us first deal with the 1806 hurricane. What happened in that storm is that the Roseau River burst its banks, hit the cliff below Goodwill. That is the area that old people know as Bassin Sicui. Bassin Sicui is the corner of the river just below Bath Estate, um, where the forestry department now is, was part of the works, the Sicui, the uh, sugar making works for Bath Estate, for La Coudre. And so they called that works a Sicui. So the bassin, the pool that was near the Sikui, was called Bassin Sikui. And what happened is the Roseau River burst its banks, came down with all of these trees and rocks, hit that bank, and the main river area was blocked. So the river then curved across what is today Windsor Park and came straight down Kennedy Avenue, Hillsborough Street, Cork Street. But the worst damage was on Kennedy Avenue and it swept 131 people away. 131 people died in that flood in the Roseau area alone um, in 1806. And we have some terrible accounts where they are, they are in the street, they are being driven by the water, and they're begging people to open their doors and let them in. But the people who are in the houses are fearful for opening their doors because they feel the water is going to come into their houses. And I will tell you today, if you dig in the street Upper Kennedy Avenue, in the area of government headquarters, Arawak Financial Center, and so there are bodies under the ground in that street. I saw them myself when they were building the sewage project, and they had to de dig deep down. People called me and said, look, there are all these skeletons that we see there. Some of the skulls were just like six inches away from the surface of the road. And these are the people that were swept away. Many of them were slaves on Bath Estate because the place they had their village, their houses, their accommodation, was just down from Bath Estate by the top of the stadium, in the area of the stadium. So when the river came around, it took all these people, took all their houses, and they were destroyed. So 1806 is a, is a very, very bad one indeed. The next time we get a hurricane is one which seriously affects the Maroons, that is the uh, slaves who were fighting for their freedom. People uh, like Jaco and uh, Congo Ray and all of these people. Um, Bala, although they had died before, but people who were alive, that is the, the Maroons, the so-called Negmaon, who were alive in uh, 1813, they were seriously affected by that storm of 1813. Uh, it was called the Great Hurricane of the 23rd July, 1813, and it laid waste to the island. In Roseau, all the major buildings were destroyed. The House of Assembly, 
the governor's house, the main warehouses, particularly those along the bayfront, the colony's jail, um, and other buildings in Roseau. And the uh, House of Assembly, when it eventually did meet in August of um, that year, were, were dealing with the issues of the escaped prisoners. And you know, we complained a lot about the looting that happened um, here at this time. And yet, at that time, in 1813, they had to pass special legislation. It says here, an act was passed to punish persons who were looting and receiving stolen goods and regulating the shipping of old metals because they were going into plantations and ripping out all the copper uh, metals and so to go and sell. And uh, the penalty was imprisonment, pillory, or both. So we, we have seen this looting going way back. Whenever a storm comes, people breaking into or utilizing the openings that have been created in buildings. This looting here, however, in um, 2017 was probably the worst of all that we have experienced, and that is a, a subject of its own. But in 1813, what happened was not just the fact that this hurricane of July hit with wind, but it was followed in August by another hurricane so close, almost just a month away from the first hurricane. So the land that had been loosened by the hurricane of 23rd July uh, 1813 was hit again by another storm on the 25th of August. Here is a description and see if this description does not match a lot of what you have seen in Hurricane Maria. It says, the second hurricane was notable for its rainfall in the way that the previous one was distinguished by the force of its wind. Torrential rain swept through the debris of the previous disaster, bringing down landslides, blocking rivers, and causing widespread flooding. As the natural dams broke, walls of water raged down the valleys. Fallen trees were torn from the hillside and rose on the powerful waters like battering rams clearing everything in their path, as had happened in 1806. People living in several river valleys were swept away in their houses to their deaths. The forest was stripped of what foliage remained and the trees were tossed across the landscape so that everything was exposed to view. They say that this catastrophe was uh, uh, horrible for the Maroons. Not only were many killed in the storms, but their flimsy uh, ajupas were also blown down. And we see that as a result of this hurricane, the Maroons uh, were seriously affected and um, teams of soldiers and so went to try to pick them up out of the shredded forest. So that's the big hurricanes of 1813. But the major one, the one that really was the most powerful in the whole of the 19th century, that's the 1800s, and was very close and equivalent to Maria. Let us let us let us look at the description. And when I describe that hurricane of the 20th, 21st September 1834, the same thing as we had the 18th to the 19th, the morning of the 19th, September 2017. When I describe this, see if you're not seeing the same picture of Maria. And I quote, and I'm quoting Dr. John Imrie. Dr. John Imrie was a medical doctor. His name survives in the Imrie Ward at the Princess Margaret Hospital. So he goes out on the morning after the great hurricane and he says, and I quote, we have had a dreadful hurricane and the country is ruined, irretrievably ruined. To attempt to detail the particulars would be almost useless. The island is devastated, absolutely laid waste from one end to the other and I am afraid will never be able to rise from its ruins. More than a hundred people have been killed, the workers' houses almost all blown down, and their provision grounds ruined. Such a scene of desolation as daylight disclosed. Streets were flooded with water and strewn with shingles, rafters, and portions of roofs of houses. Trees blown down and lying across the streets, Houses entirely turned upside down or shifted into the middle of the street, many of them in ruins. All the houses along the bay were injured. 
partly by the surf which rolled up in tremendous waves. The accounts as they come in from the country are really distressing. The appearance of the country is altogether changed. Instead of being covered with verdure, it now looks as if fire had passed over it. Scarcely a leaf can be seen. The roads are completely impassable, and it's impossible to say when they will be cleared. The planters are ruined. They will never be able to rebuild their works or carry on their cultivation unless they get a loan from the government. Many estates must be abandoned, etc., etc. He goes on for about four pages describing this terrible hurricane. But in that description, do you not see for yourself the same kind of description of Hurricane Maria that we experienced as we went out of our homes on that morning of the 19th of September 2017. So we can see that great hurricane strip the landscape and I was very interested that just today a young man came to me and he said you know on the cover of your Dominica storybook you have a picture a pa picture painting of of Dominica behind Rousseau in uh, was it a hurricane it looks so different and I said you know you're very observant because that painting was done in 1837 that was three years after the great hurricane and it just shows how the landscape was still suffering. You could see all the, the rocks, all the layers of soil and the different types of geological formations. And that was very true indeed. So that was the great hurricane of 1834. And of course, people rebuilt themselves. You know, we, 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 we look today and we say, oh, it is hopeless, Dominica is done, Dominica is finished. And that's what they were saying in 1834. But, you know, Within 20 years, the island was back on its feet, producing uh, coffee and sugar and limes, and business went on as usual. So there always is this shock whenever you get these descriptions of the hurricanes, and then they continue. Now, the next big one, and this is very interesting for us, the next big one is 1916. Now, they had a number of hurricanes, smaller hurricanes in between. I mentioned 1806, we have August 1813, two of them. 1834 was the Great Hurricane. Then we had a small one, 1876, 1883, 1889, 1891, 1893. But then, in the early 20th century, 28th of August, 1916, terrible hurricane hit Dominica. And when we read the reports by the engineers, we will find that it hit the same places that Hurricane Maria hit, but in many cases there were not uh, things constructed there. So let us start. He, the British were very organized eh, in these colonial times. So as soon as a hurricane had happened, they sent out the colonial engineer to go throughout the whole island and to issue a report. So this is his detailed report on the damage caused by the storm of the 28th of August, 1916, with an estimate for repairs. Now, you will notice that most of the terrible hurricanes that hit Dominica hit in the second part of August and in up to the 20th and so of September. That is the period that you've got to look out for hurricanes uh, in Dominica. The, they call them the Cape Verde hurricanes because they start off the Cape Verde Islands in West Africa, come across the Atlantic Ocean in our direction. So let's, let's read a few of the um, reports. Now, anybody who has gone up the Roseau Valley uh, and seen the damage that occurred after you pass Silver Lake and before you get on the hill going up uh, to Cabanes or um, Copt Hall, um, there is an area there where Minias was just and a church, uh, I think it's a church of Yahweh um, and some other buildings were there and that was entirely flooded by the river. So here, 18, 1916 hurricane and the man writes, and that area, let me remind you, traditionally older people call that area Savan Park, Savannah Park or Savan Park. So. The Rosa River came down with extreme violence, and I'm quoting the report. It overflowed its banks at a section of the Bath Estate called Savan Park, 
carried away about five or six acres of lime field, about 300 feet of roadway, and about 90 feet of old retaining wall built in about 1883. These old retaining walls are built of very strong lime mortar, and the reason of failure lay in the water getting behind the wall through scoring away the lime field, washing out the road filling, and carrying the wall in front of it. And there were photographs they took. I remember seeing those photographs in the old public library. But what is interesting is that nothing happened for years. And then in 2017, with uh, 101 years later with Hurricane Maria, the same damage that occurred in 1916 happens at Savan Park. The same thing the man has described, the same area of roadway, 300 feet of roadway. And if you go behind the, there's a mechanic shop uh, at the Palm Grove area, you will see the wall he's talking about. They rebuilt the wall, and you will see an old wall behind that mechanic shop that they tried to divert the river from ever getting into Savan Park again. But of course, with the force that was coming down River Clare, as well as the main roads of river, Savan Park was destroyed. Now, an interesting thing too is that some years ago, the planning division, physical planning division, was asked to approve a building to be put in Savan Park opposite the community high school. In fact, the community high school probably shouldn't be there either. But anyway, the fact of the matter is there was a request to physical planning, and physical planning refused the request. But the powers that be manipulated the situation and the physical planning was overruled and that building was put there. And today, those buildings that followed suit and um, the guy from Trafalgar who has a, um, uh, an ironwork shop there, he also was damaged, that whole Savan Park. So really and truly, if we looked at the report of 1916, we would realize that that should never have been built there. Savan Park should have been left alone and no building should have taken place because that's the destruction that we now have with 2017. Another 2017 disaster. Huh. This time it's auto trade. But let us go back to the report of 1916, okay? The engineer says, the Bury or Canefield River left its course about a half a mile above the road to the bridge, Canefield Bridge swept through the lime fields, scoured the roadway, and continued on its way to the sea. It left the way open for severe damage in the future if its old course is not opened again. What they are describing in 1916 is exactly the spot where auto trade is today. And auto trade we know got damaged in two years ago in Tropical Storm Erica and severely damaged this time with uh, Maria and it continued across the road just like in 1916 continued across the road and brought all those cars into the Whitchurch distribution center and then continued on and joined the river further down and went into the sea just as they described in 1916 so if we followed the 1916 report we would know that is not the place to put construction now let us go to another incident this, this year in this hurricane, Maria. One thing Maria did is that it undermined one of the abutments, one of the supports for the Laiu River Bridge. Now, the Laiu River Bridge consists of an older bridge constructed in 1902 and a newer bridge constructed in the 1980s um, under the Freedom Party by Nelwell Terry Engineers. Now, um, what we find is that that same bridge has been undermined again 101 years later. Let me read from this report. The Lai River is the longest river in the island and also carries the most water. It must have had a glorious evening. Now I love the way this engineer is joking about the scene. He says, the river must have had a glorious evening as it carried away four foot bridges three of which had been standing for eight to ten years. That's footbridges up in, up in high up in the Layu. Two motor lorries and about 40 acres of lime and cocoa cultivation, completing the list of damage by exposing 
the foundation of the Lyou Bridge owing to the deepening of its bed by seven feet. That is 1916. This is exactly what has happened in 2017. The abutment to the Lyou River Bridge has been undermined and collapsed and now we only have one section of the bridge to drive over. All right, let's go further up the coast in 1916. Makushri, once again, I'll, re I'll read from the report. The Makushri River, rising from the same hills as the Layu, but only about one third of the Layu's length, brought the debris from practically unknown regions and deposited it all along the cultivation on its way to the sea, sweeping away about 40 to 50 acres of cultivation and crowning its efforts by carrying away the bridge. Now that bridge was rebuilt in 1920 and that is the bridge that survives today that we are using because the Bailey Bridge collapsed and the bridge built in 1960s collapsed and so actually we are using this bridge from 1920 to cross the Makushri River and the damage that they are reporting in 1916 is the same. It has happened again. Um, then let's move a little further to even a more serious damage at Kaliho. Now, in 1916, we really had human tragedy. We had equivalent to what happened at Petit Savan in Tropical Storm Erica because the Kaliho River came down and it swept 30 houses into the sea and over 30 people were drowned. They died. They were never seen again. They were swept out to sea. So let us read the report. At Kaliho, the severe rains caused heavy landslides up the valley, which blocked up the riverbed for a short time and finally gave way. The heavy flood following the burst broke through a retaining wall built in 1888 to protect the village, swept through the village, carrying houses, land, and everything with it, including some 30 villagers. And um, he mentions here that the path of the river through the village, uh, which used to be, he shows after the storm, that used to be closely packed with village huts. So Kali Hole was packed as it is today with village houses, and it was totally destroyed. People put up a little wall, which was there with Erica. Erica damaged it, and, and now in 2017, swept through the village destroying houses and damaging houses again. So, you know, we have to look at this and decide, look, is it wise? We've had this since 101 years ago and we're having it again. Is it wise that we continue to put houses there? Maybe we should go up on the ridges and see where we can find nice, good land to be appropriated for village extension. I just want to deal with three others that happened in 1916 and that have happened again. And one of the valleys that gets seriously affected with these hurricanes, and it was seriously affected in Hurricane David, is um, Concord. And he says here, Concord, that is Concord, of course, comes from Hatton Garden, Pegua, and it continues all the way up to Desbranches and beyond. And it channels wind either from the Atlantic, in one instance, or it channels wind from the center of the island and down back to the Atlantic. The Concord Valley is a very dangerous valley for wind. So he says here, Concord suffered the worst as the whole place was raised to the ground. Buildings, trees, cultivation, etc. being so badly treated that it is almost impossible to tell where the various places stood. That's Concord and if you go there today you'll see very badly damaged. Once again, in the area of Soufre, another damage in 1916, which was repeated. He says it seems that there was a huge tidal wave which damaged the public road between Soufre and Scott's Head, and also on the south coast, particularly under the Stowe Cliffs, that is between um, Bagatelle and Grand Bay, Geneva, and also in Soufre Bay. So we have the same damage 101 years ago happening again uh, in this one. And then the Rosalie Bridge, there was once a tall bridge, 13 feet high, he says here, and the, Rosa, uh, the Rosalie River came down flowing over the deck of the bridge um, with 13 feet waterway high. 
and the normal rise of the river is only about seven feet, but it went over 13 feet. The Rosalie riv River came down very heavily this time. And the last one from 1916 that I will deal with is something that is bothering us a lot. On that Imperial Road, uh, the Springfield Road, the sinking that is happening at Antrim, 1916, let's go and read that report. The Imperial Road, Canefield to Concord, had suffered. The, um, the road had to be closed for a week owing to the hillside at Antrim Valley Estate slipping bodily down. Now he says here, this cannot be termed a landslide according to our usual nomenclature as the slide, which is an unusually big one, was not due to our road cuttings, but I should rather attribute it to an earth tremor. Well, he's wrong in a way because that whole section, and I will not go into too much detail at Antrim, uh, has been sliding for over a hundred years. And it's sliding today, whenever there's heavy rain, and we can see with the exposed trees where it's coming from. It's coming from way up high the mountain. The whole hillside in that section is sliding down. It's moving into the Springfield or Antrim River, and we know where that ends. It comes out at Czech Hall at the end of the Canefield airstrip by the Massac School. And that is going to continue to be a serious, serious threat. Um, for any rain, it doesn't have to be a hurricane. And the Antrim slip is causing havoc even today. And here it was described in 1916. So, uh, my friends, this is an example. Like, we, we know today that this is how... Um, we know today that this is what we've experienced, this is what we have seen, and we think it's the worst ever, and it's never happened before, and whatever. But we have to realize that these things have happened before, and uh, when you study the history of hurricanes in Dominica, you begin to understand a little more clearly um, that we must be very careful where we build. You know, we have these examples from 1916, and we went and built on them. And naturally, they will come back again. It doesn't have to be in our lifetime. It can be after we're, we're dead and gone. Uh, people, to end with, I will talk about briefly Hurricane David compared to um, Maria. Hurricane David indeed was the worst storm in the 20th century. It beat the hurricane of 1916, and there was another hurricane in 1928, and another hurricane in 1930. But the thing with Hurricane David is it really just skirted the, the eye of Hurricane David. And I'm reading a report from the University of Swansea in Wales. They did a big report on Hurricane David in 1980. And they show that the eye of Hurricane David passed from the area of Grand Bay across just southern Roseau. But remember, a hurricane is not a dot. So this storm was very big. So although the eye passed from Grand Bay, um, Bagatelle, Petit Savan, across to South and South Roseau, the um, area up to at least um, Colliho was severely affected, Concord Valley again, but the minor hurricane damage was higher up towards Vicas and these areas. So that was David. The winds were estimated. The, the report says uh, that the winds were um, in the lesser areas 150 miles an hour gusting to 200 but to affect Dominica since the great hurricane of 1834. So Hurricane David uh, we also have to know was hitting us at a time when there was less infrastructure. Whole areas like Grand Savannah, housing areas, um, Wall House, uh, Casa Comfort had just started um, there was no electricity in the east. That means to say there were no high-tension wi wires or poles to be destroyed in the east. That came in the 1980s. There was less infrastructure to be destroyed in Hurricane David, but still the destruction was great. Now we have more infrastructure. We have electricity all over the island. Those high-tension poles that are between Freshwater Lake and, and Grand Fort in the middle of the forest, they were lowered by helicopter by teams uh, working for Domlek for the, from Colombia. And, you know, the damage that we now experience is so much more because there is more infrastructure in place. We have reached our half hour. I could go on and explain in more detail certain aspects of our hurricanes in the past. 
But I hope you have got the message that although we have not witnessed those hurricanes in our lifetime, Dominica itself has experienced some terrible storms. We are the most mountainous island in the Caribbean. We attract the most rain. We are halfway up, halfway along the Lesser Antilles. And therefore, we are in the line of many of these storms. And because of our geological position, our geographical position, and because particularly of our mountainous nature, our massive rivers, even our little ravines that explode and bring down massive destructive uh, uh, stones and trees, it is a very dangerous landscape when it comes to hurricanes. So hold on. Take courage from these reports. Life was bad in the past. People thought Dominica could never rebuild in 1834, in 1916, in 1969, 1979, sorry. But we did. And I would say we can again. Thank you all very much. And thanks to DBS for having me on their show. Good. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Um, Dr. Lennox. Uh, I want to thank you so much for coming through. Actually, Good. you know, I, I learned so <laughs> much from this uh, this afternoon, and uh, I know that you put uh, things into perspective for a lot of people. Who, you know, uh, making their assumptions. Uh, uh, you know, do you know, wondering, you know, about uh, these hurricanes and which was the worst hurricane? And you know, a lot of people, you know, were describing Maria as the worst to to hit the island and. You know, I myself was wondering, I used to ask questions as well to, the, to some of the people who actually saw Hurricane David. So I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful for you coming through to DBS Radio, and I'm sure a lot of people out there are very thankful as well. We had a lot of calls come in, but unfortunately, we couldn't have taken those calls. It was very interesting, you know, listening to Dr. Lennox Honeychurch, and uh, I hope that uh, you, you could come again.